time. And my producer wrote back and said, okay, fine. You can have equal time. You can be on the show. You can counteract what Dr. McDougall said, but he will be on stage with you. And so we met. We met on Lifestyle Magazine in June of 1993. And we did a half an hour television show. And he said the dairy industry has a fine reputation. They're a trusted industry. And that was the bulk of his argument, except he had one special argument that I want to share with you. And this was the main thrust of why you should believe dairy products are good for you. He wouldn't counteract the fact that the dairy products were full of viruses and other kinds of microbes, that they promote heart disease and obesity and diabetes and other problems. He wouldn't counteract any of that. What his main argument was is about three minutes into the show, he reached into his pocket and he told us why you should consume dairy products. He said, if there was any thought that dairy products were in any way harmful, there is no way I would let them consume them. And he showed us a picture of his two children. His two-year-old consumes milk, yogurt, and cheese regularly, and his five-and-a-half-month-old is on cow-based formula. And that is the argument from the dairy industry as to why you should consume milk, and that is their counter to the scientific evidence. Those two shows, by the way, are shown around the country. They're shown to, to various groups of people. And they show the Virgil Hall show and they'll say, well, there must, be a, there must be an answer that the dairy industry has to this. They wouldn't let Dr. McDougall get away with saying these kinds of things. Well, you come on back next week and we'll show you the other show. And they show them the other show and they're shocked because they've got nothing to say. You know that meat is not health food. You know that. You've heard how red meat's not good for you, how it promotes heart disease and cancer and all kinds of problems. And most of you, most consumers in this country, even though they still consume it, know there's a problem. But you believe in dairy products. You believe they're health food. I want you to change your way of thinking. I want you instead to think of dairy products as liquid meat. And to make my case, what I want you to do is I want you to compare the macronutrient content, in other words, the large nutrients, between dairy products and meat. If you compare beef to cheese, you find that they're both about 70% fat. The amount of protein is very similar, 25 to 30%. You found that they have virtually no carbohydrate. They have no dietary fiber. They both have similar content of cholesterol. They have no vitamin C. So if you can put it in that perspective, if you can stop thinking of cheese and milk and so on as health food, as nature's most perfect food, something you never grow out your need for, if you instead can think of it as liquid meat, then you're getting pretty much on target. People bargain with me all the time. They, they come to me and they say, you know, I'm ready to change my diet, but just not completely. So I'll just make some small changes. What do you suggest I give up? You know. Should I give up cigarettes or should I give up whiskey? Should I give up dairy or should I give up beef? It's a hard one. But sometimes I have to help them make those kinds of decisions. And one of the hardest decisions for women to make is to give up the dairy group. Men can do it. Yeah. I think it's a gender thing. I hope I don't offend anybody here. But I think it's a gender thing. What I find is that men will tell me that they can give up milk and cheese no problem at all, but not their meat. And what do women say? I've seen this over the years, and actually there have been psychological studies to confirm what I have observed, and that is that women have trouble giving up the dairy, don't they? That, you know, it's, I think it's because it's kind of a, a traditional woman kind of thing. You know, it's associated with, uh, with mothering, with nurturing. It's a domestic thing. Remember, women used to stay around the, the village and milk the cows. It's kind of a homegrown type thing, dairy products. It's a, it's a, a, a home associated industry, family oriented. And of course, who gets the bulk of the advertising messages from the dairy industry? It's women. You got to drink it for your bones. That's the primary selling message out there. And so women have the most difficult time giving up the milk. Well, with that in mind, if you were going to bargain with me and you were going to ask, what of the basic four food groups should I give up? Remember the old basic four food groups? Advertising dairy and meat and vegetables and fruits to you. An advertisement, by the way, usually put out by the dairy industry. 
If you bargained with me and you said, for my better health, for the health of my family, which of the four groups should I give up? Obviously, it wouldn't be the fruit and vegetable, would it? But when it came to the dairy of the meat group, I'd tell you, give up the dairy. Why? Because it has similar problems, as I showed you the macronutrient content, as the meat groups, but it has additional problems, such as the autoimmune and the allergy problems. But the biggest problem is that you believe it's health food. And so you eat it without guilt. And you feed it to your kids that way. And that's very wrong. So I hope I've given you a chance to rethink this. Not only are dairy products not necessary for your health and bones, they're also destructive to your family. And it may be the most difficult message for you to get because there's been so much education, so much effort, so much money putting behind trying to give you the other message. But I promise you that it will be the greatest benefit to you and your family if you can get this correct. You are not a cow. Your children are not calves. You should not be consuming cow's milk. It is a serious health hazard. Thank you very much.